we believe that this message will be a blessing to you so I want you to stay glued and watch to the end and share to bless others this is Christocentric we have a lot of Apostle Eric Nyamiche's message on our platform kindly check them out thank you for watching stay blessed now we'll speak briefly on the new creation as God's agent on earth the new creation as God's agent on earth now when we talk about the new creation it simply means that there is an old creation that the one who is referred to as an old creation is the human being and all of us are humans and we have been born again it's a born again experience that makes us new creations but the human being was created for a purpose Genesis 2 verse 15 Genesis 2 verse 15, the human being was created for a purpose. And this is what the scripture says in Genesis 2 verse 15. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. What that means is that to manage the earth. So he carefully created him. The human being was the last to be created. And then he came as a manager. Just let's pay attention to Genesis 1. This is very familiar to all of us. We know it, but please pay attention to it. Genesis 1, 26, 26 and 27. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea, the best in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. This one is that they may rule, they may have dominion, but there is no human being here mentioned. It was about bears, fishes, and all that. So we don't dominate a fellow human being, because the human being is created for a purpose. Every one of us is special in the eyes of God. And so when you come to verse 27, so God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female created he them. God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Now, so God created us for a purpose, to manage the earth. Every one of us is fearfully and wonderfully made. According to David in Psalm 139, he says God carefully knitted us. He knitted us. Because he was creating us for a purpose, he did that carefully. So when you land on the planet Earth, you can't possibly take your eyes off what is happening around you because you are a manager. Every one of us should be concerned about what is going around us. You must be concerned about Ghana. You must be concerned about the budget. You must be concerned about the filth. You must be concerned about corruption. Everything around us should concern you because you are a human being created to manage God's earth. When you are following someone who is littering, please be concerned. Yeah. Don't say that this is for Zoom Lion people. Be concerned. When we came back from South Africa, we frequented the hospital too much. We were always plagued with malaria. And then one of those days, I took my small boy to the hospital. And then somehow we met this white lady. And then um, he said, uh, young man, your, your son is suffering from malaria. And then she added, why do you have to uh, allow your child to suffer from malaria? I allow your child... And so I was looking at her. Then she said, mosquito is an insect. Then when she said that, I got what she meant. I should have control over mosquitoes. Now, so if we have a nation that cannot even control mosquitoes, then we are in trouble. And all of us must be concerned. So that is the human being created to manage the earth. So when you have children, manage them well. 
Don't just go to work. Your wife is gone. You're also gone. And you don't know anything about how the children are making it. You just put them in school and you think education is all. Education is not all in all, please. No. You have to manage the home and manage the earth. Now, but somehow, because of sin, God decided to recreate us. But the, the new creation is more than someone whose sins has been forgiven. Otherwise, what is the use of salvation? Because all of us who are seated here, our sins have been forgiven. So if that is all, then why do we have to go to church? Or we have to go to church and keep our Christianity, our salvation, and then when the trumpet is blasted, we just go to heaven. That is not it. There is something more that this new creation should know. He is called a new creation. Ephesians 2 verse 10. Ephesians 2 verse 10 says this about the new creation. It says the new creation is created in God. It is God's handiworks. Just as he knitted us and we got born by our parents, the new creation is God's own handiworks. He has created the new creation for good works. Now for good works beyond just managing the earth. Ephesians 4 24. Ephesians 4, 24. And to put on the new self. Let's read together. And to put on the new self. Created to be like... Now hold that. We have been created to be like God. Created to be like God. In true righteousness and holiness. Because God is our Father. And He has created us to be like Him. This new creation, the difference between him and the ordinary human being is this, that this one is created to be like God. Now, if he's created to be like God, then he's created to deal with principalities and powers. And this is what the natural man has no control over. So when people are talking about witches and wizards, don't also speak the same language. You have been created to be like God. Jesus said, I give you power over everything, everything, and nothing shall by enemies hurt you. We have power over demons, power over Satan, because we have been created to be like God. Now, hold this in your spirit. He has been created to be like God. But he has been created not just to be like God, but to do good works. What kind of works? Why is that important? In Matthew chapter 6, Verse 33, Matthew 6:33. This is what Jesus told the disciples. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Why should we seek the kingdom and his righteousness? Because Colossians 1, 13. I'd like us to go into scripture. So, please get your Bible close to you. For he rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves. So the born again has been rescued from the devil and brought into a kingdom. He says that the kingdom of God's son. So when you are in Ghana and you are born again, remember that you are a human being who is supposed to be concerned about the nation because you are a manager. But you should also know that you have been translated into a kingdom. What does this mean? Philippians 3 verse 20. What does this mean? To be translated into a kingdom. What does this mean? It means that our citizenship is in heaven. Now, so we have dual citizenship. Now, we are from Ghana and we are from heaven. Because the, the, the kingdom into which we have been translated into is a heavenly kingdom. God is a ruler of that kingdom. 
and you are a subject in the kingdom, if you like a people in the kingdom, and God dwells in heaven. That is why Paul says that our citizenship is in heaven. So the new creation has a dual responsibility. One, to advance the kingdom of God and also to manage the earth. So when you are born again, you are God's hope of the manifestation of his glory on earth. The advancement of his kingdom depends on you because you are a people of his kingdom living in Ghana. You see, one day we will go home. When you are born again, when you are just a natural man, you are born in Ghana. So when you die, you have left Ghana. But when you are born again, you are a citizen of heaven. When you die, you go home. When you die, you go home. So one day we will go home. But before we go, there's work for us to do. Because we are people of the kingdom. So let's go back to Matthew 6, 33 again. Matthew 6, 33 again. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things shall be given to you as well. By this instruction, Jesus introduces the disciples to what their priority and pursuit should be. Our priority and pursuit should be the kingdom. The kingdom, the advancement of the kingdom. We must devote and dedicate our lives as Christians to the advancement of the kingdom of God on earth. What this means is that as new creations, each one of us, that is why I said in that army, I also have a part. Each one of us is expected to pursue righteousness. Because in the kingdom of God, it is not meat and drink, but it is righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Spirit, and power. So that when you are a member of the kingdom of God, you must pursue the values and principles of the kingdom. Now, what is going on in this world is this. God is the creator and he is the Lord. But in the world, we have systems of governance. Now, the democratic system that we have today, that the world is hailing, is not an absolute system. It is so bad. Maybe when you compare to other governance systems, it may be good. But you need a lot of money to win an election. You need a lot of money to win an election. It breeds corruption from the, the word go. Yeah. It breeds corruption. Sometimes people come to power and you realize that they don't have much. They don't have much. Like a former American president, Barack Obama. But after he is saved, he can build a whole kind of a sub-city in Chicago. That is what it means. It makes people who are not worthy so much worthy. So much. But this kind of systems does not bring the righteousness of God. God has always wanted to rule his people. So in the world system are God's representatives. They are called new creations. They are from heaven. They are born again. They form an army. It is called the church. And in that army, you have a part. So that when we are working in Ghana, we have to be conscious of where we come from. And then we must know that for us, we operate with the values and principles of the kingdom of God. So that when you go to your workplace, and some other Ghanaians are operating as natural men. You see, you don't expect a natural man to be truthful. What is born of the flesh is flesh. If you are a natural man and there's a way to add some zeros and get some money, I would advise you to do that. 
when you don't do that, the others around you will say you are stupid. Because that is not the rule. But in the midst of them, go and sit there as an agent of righteousness. You sit among them as an agent of righteousness. You go to hospital. You meet the average nurse. They rush in someone who is bleeding. Someone who is almost dying. The nurse looks at the patients and he turns the eyes this way. He gets on the phone. This is the Ghanaian nurse for you. Yeah. Then they turn on. Yeah. And when you are there, these people do not serve from their heart. They serve because of their purse. But some of us will have to make the difference. Now, some of us will have to make the difference. That is why the slogan for the Vision 2023 is possessing the nation's I am an agent of transformation. Every one of us is an agent because we are representing a kingdom. Yes. We are representing a kingdom. And this consciousness must be built into our spirit. That is why none of you should be staying home because you must come to meet the Father, learn of the kingdom principles so you can apply. You can apply. So in this army, every one of us has a part. Every one of us has a part. Now, who is an agent? So from the four going, I'm trying to bring your mind to the fact that we are agents of the kingdom of God. Agents. Wherever you are, tomorrow you'll be going to work Remember that you are an agent. When we close and you go home, tell your wife, I am an agent of righteousness. So the two of you shouldn't be fighting because both of you are agents of righteousness. When somebody comes here and then the person gives an excuse that you see in every marriage there are challenges, let the people know that that is not the standard of God. So work to the standard. Let people know that you are a people of God. Who is an agent? An agent is a person or business authorized to act on another's behalf. When you are authorized to act on another's behalf, you are an agent like us. We are working on behalf of the kingdom of God. We are agents here. An agent also is a person who acts in an official capacity for a government or a private agency. An agent acts as a guard, a detective, or a spy. Now this, you remember the Israelites who were sent to Jericho to spy the land? No, they were just agents. Now when they got what they wanted, they went back. So whilst we are here, let us get what we want. Let us impart the land. Then when we are done, like Jesus, he said, it is finished. The Telestai. I've done what I'm supposed to do. I'm going back home. So that is an agent. So we are saying that this means that anyone who works or acts in an official capacity for a government or for any private agency can be described as an agent. An agent can also be defined as a natural force or object producing or used to obtain specific result. The first definition is you can learn it to a human being, but this one, it says an object or something that is introduced, a substance, like Matthew chapter 13, verse 33. Matthew 13, 33. He told them still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into about 60 pounds of flour until it went all through the dough. Now, the kingdom of heaven, Jesus said, is likened to a yeast. This is not a human being, it's just a substance which is introduced into a flour. And then it is introduced into a flour for a purpose. The purpose is to transform the flower, work itself through it. Yeah. So the dough is like this. 
but the yeast will make the dough become like that. So the yeast enters the flour to do a certain kind of job. Now, so all of us as agents of the kingdom of God, we have entered into this world for a purpose. Jesus Christ is always the pattern of the new creation. He is our big brother, the Bible says. He is our big brother. And I like 1 John 4, verse 17. If you have the King James, you can let us read from the King James. Shall we read together? Herein is our love that... Yeah, hold it. I like the first part. Shall we shout out that? Because as he is, so are we in this world. This is the standard. As Jesus is, so are we in this world. Now, the scripture is careful to say in this world. Because when we go to where he is, we cannot be like him. Now, he is the king. Now, when we get there, we have to just lay our crowns before him. But as he is, so are we in this world. What that means is that we are ambassadors of Christ. We are representing him. And as he is, so are we. So let us look at who he was when he was on the planet Earth. One or two. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 5.18. And because of time, let's read verse 19 in particular. That God was reconciling the world to himself. Not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us, what? The message of reconciliation. So let's take the 18, rather. So let's go back. And this is from God, who reconciles us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. So let's take the verse 20. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. Although God is making his appeal through us, we employ you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled, to God. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself. So the verse 19. Let's take the King James. It rhymes better than the other versions. So when you want to commit scripture into memory, maybe the King James will help you. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. So when we saw Jesus walking on the shores of Galilee, you may think that this is the son of Joseph, not knowing that the whole God was hiding in him, using his body to reconcile the world unto himself. God was in Christ. Colossians says that it pleased the Godhead, that the fullness of the Godhead would dwell in him bodily. So when you saw him, you have seen God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Yeah. That is why sometimes his actions mesmerize the disciples. So what manner of man is this? Because we have been eating with him, we have been sharing room with him, but the next day, you see him walking on water. Yeah. The storm ranges and the man is fast asleep. Fast asleep. They wake him up. Don't you care that we perish? Yes, storm. Quiet. Peace be still. And then the storm comes. He goes back to sleep. And all the 12 of them will go and stand there, look at him snore. And they will ask each other, do you think this man? Yeah. There's something about him. Something about they suspected that he wasn't like them. I want you to live in such a way that the people at your workplace will know that you are not like them. Yeah. 
You are not like them. We are not like them at all. When I was growing up as a pastor, I pledged to myself that any time that pastors will meet, I'll try and conduct myself to be the pastor among the pastors. Yeah. I tried. I tried. And little by little, he said that they'll be respecting you. And then they'll call you and say, hey, Eric, Eric, pastors will be calling you to give them advice. Conduct yourself well because you are an agent. And the Bible says that he has given us the ministry of reconciliation. This time, he is gone. But he says, as if Christ is in you. Now, reconciling the world unto himself. For Christ, God was in him. For us, Christ is in us. That is why the pencil people will say, Christ in you. It is the hope of the manifestation of the glory of God. So God's hope is in you. In this army, we've got a part. The transformation of this nation is not in the hands of parliamentarians. When we leave it for them, they will shock us. <laughs> they will shock us. <laughs> you see the America we see today, it's not that they like the LGBTQ. They hate it. But few legislators have made America as it is. So let us shine our eyes. Anna. <laughs> shine our eyes. We will not sit down for few people who call themselves learned friends. And you know, haven't we learned anything? Some of them should wait for election petition. This is not election petition. This is about morality. This is not about teaching students in, in, in the lecture hall where you propound theories and they clap. This one, the market women, they don't even understand. We are God's hope, not the parliamentarians. That is why I want to encourage you, every one of you, if you think you can be in parliament, work hard and get there. Get there. We need to possess the land. We need to. When they put professors together, don't be afraid. What we have is over and above that. Now, after all, what is Professor studying? He is studying something small of what our father has created. Don't mind them. So they were always suspecting about Christ. They thought that he was not like them. Then one day, he said something. Let's go to John 16, 28 to 30. John 16 from verse 28. I came from the Father and this word entered. I came from the Father and entered the world. Now I am leaving the world and going back to the Father. The next verse. Then Jesus' disciples said, Now you are speaking clearly without figures of speech. <laughs> then let's listen to the next verse. Now we can see that you know all things. So what is that? Knowing all things means that you are God. And that you do not even need to have anyone ask you questions. This makes us believe that you came from God. <laughs> So all along, we have been suspecting that, no, 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 you can't be from Nazareth. Nazareth, a human being like you from Nazareth. Then he says, I came from the Father and entered the world. Why did he enter the world? Romans 5, verse 12. Romans 5, verse 12. Therefore, just as sin entered the world, <laughs> through one man and death through sin and in this same way death came to all people because all have sinned verse 13 to be sure sin was in the world before the law was given but sin is not charged against any one account where there is no law when you read on you realize the introduction of Jesus on the planet 
Or be chasey bunny. Yeah. Bonnie entered the world. He also entered the world. Chased Bonnie away. Delivered us. And gave us power over Bonnie. Yeah. He entered the world. So he's saying that I am an agent. I entered the world. I entered the world. When it was about time for him to die, let's listen to what he said. John chapter 13, 1 to 3. John 13, 1 to 3. When it was about time for him to die. It was just before the Passover. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. He knew that the time had come for him to go back to the Father. That once he died and he resurrected, he had accomplished his purpose. So he knew that it was time for him. He entered the world and he must go back to where he came from. We have also been introduced into the world as new creation. Let us work hard, affect our land, and then when it's time, when we have done our bit, we will go back to where we come from now. So as he is, so are we in this world. Let's listen to Jesus. Um, John 17, 14 through 18. This is what Jesus is saying about his disciples. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them. The world has hated them. Now, when he's talking about us, and he's saying that the world has hated them, he's simply saying that there's a group of people who are not part of the world, who are in the world, but are not part of the world. For they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. Now, the next verse. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. The next one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Now, this must enter our spirit. Let's read the next verse together. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. Let's take the last one. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. So all of us have been sent into the world. So we have to enter the world. And next year we are going to dress, put on the armor, and enter the world properly. Enter the world. Enter the world. When you are born again, don't think that you are just an ordinary fellow. You are not. You are an agent of the kingdom of God. Christ is in you. Pleading that you allow him to use your hands, your mouth, your legs, every being of yours. To influence the, the sphere where you operate. So that the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdom of our God. You are an agent of the kingdom of God. Please, Christ is in you. And you are God's hope of glory. You are the light of the world. So don't hide it. There are some of you who go to your workplace, I want uh, sister, sister, and so. They know the name, but you say sister, sister, and so. What sister? Roman sister? No, so no, this one is Pentecost sister. Uh, which one? You describe, oh, she's here. Oh, she's here. They, they, they didn't know. <laughs> because my friend, my friend, my friend, my friend, now, they didn't know. But today, wherever the light is hiding, I want to encourage you. Put it on a lampstand. And let it influence the society. I want to encourage you to continue to study. And go to the length that you can. Because the higher the limestone, the greater the influence. If you are lecturing in the university, when you become the VC, we will be happy. Yeah. Because then you can influence a lot of people. So may the Lord bless us. All that I try to say this morning, that you are a creation of God. You are a human being. You must be concerned about what is going on because you are a manager. But we have been born again to establish 
and advance the kingdom of God with values and principles of the kingdom. We are not of the world, so let us live differently. Let us change our land. And everything that we need to cause that influence is in us. It is built into us. And we can transform the land. We have been created to be like God. We have been created unto good works. May somebody understand me this morning. And may the Spirit of God take these few words that I have spoken and put it in your heart. And may he breathe upon it and turn it great. That from today onwards, you will change your sphere of influence. When you go to work tomorrow, go from office to office. Yeah, from, from, say henceforth, watch my life. I'm an agent of transformation. Henceforth, watch my life. I'm an agent of transformation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speak it. So that you challenge yourself. When you see me doing anything anti-Christ, draw my attention. Because I'll change all of you. I'll change the system. I'll change the system. I'll change the system. You know there's something about a good Christian. Salt doesn't only flavor things. Salt is an inhibitor. Yeah. When you spread salt on the land, no seed will grow. So let me take your, your seat. I come and sit here. Full of salt. So this one, he has a tendency of taking certain things. Tendency, tendency, tendency. But when they want to do it, they say, hey, this man is around. This man is around. Be careful. So as long as I'm here and I'm doing the right thing, I will inhibit all the evil that has to be done. <laughs> so one Christian can influence a million. That is how powerful God has made us. Yeah. The office romance must cease. Because there are agents of transformation around. Don't allow your, your boss to play with you. Let him take his promotion. Yeah. Stop the work. You go and sell at Mokola. Yeah. Tell him that if you don't stop, I will report you. Yeah. He said, they will sack you. Report. Another person too will report. Right. People will be reporting. Right. Now they will stop. Right. See, when you go to work with light, mm-hmm. people will start shouting at you. What yes. is this? What is this? Are you the only Christian? Uh-uh. What that means is that they are naked. Mm-hmm. So they don't want light. But if you keep the light on, they will go and dress. Yeah. Yeah. The Obama is put on something. I want us to change this nation. Yes, we are too many to have such a nation. Let us rise to our feet. In this army, you have a part. Let us pray that God will help us to play our role well. And from today, be an agent of transformation. Shall we open our mouths and let us pray? Wabo satin. Libyan de 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 de